Hi, welcome back to Dark Souls Remastered. I am here in the Undead Burg, picking up right where I left off. Um, you missed a tiny little bit of, uh, <laughs> wow, so many bloodstains around here. Um, I did actually get up and, uh, let my cat outside so that she would not interrupt me because I, the first time I started recording this video, she, uh, started jumping right up on my keyboard, so, uh, I, I dealt with that. <laughs> so many bloodstains around here. Yeah, this is, uh, this is one of the... I mean, when you're first playing this game, um, this is a very tough area. I mean, pretty much every area is tough when you're first playing this game. But, uh, Undead Burg is definitely... Definitely, definitely a tough thing. That's what I was afraid of. I was afraid I was going to get hit by a firebomb. Uh, so I forgot to mention this. Um, in the last video, I actually turned on the motion blur setting. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coughing my brains out. Wait, did I get everything that was up here? Um... There is actually, yeah, you can actually, if you're very brave, I believe you can actually jump from here down to where that, that glowing item is down there, and that is a ring. So if you're very brave, you can actually do that, and um, that allows you to get around a somewhat difficult foe. I'm not going to do that because uh, that ring is not that important to me. Um, I think I was saying something and then I got lost my train of thought. Oh, I turned on the motion blur. That's what it was. Um, I had disabled it because I thought it was kind of distracting, but um, I've had it on for the last video and this video, and it hasn't bothered me, so I'm just going to leave it on. It was on by default, so these are pretty much the default settings. Oh, I forgot about that guy. Ugh. There's a, uh, there's a, there's a archer in the tower behind me up there. So, let's go dispatch this guy. This evil, evil crossbowman. Um, let's use my healing spell instead of wasting an Estus Flask. Oh, wow, that worked really well. So again, I've, I've never played a cleric before in Dark Souls 1. So I don't really know how well it's going to work. Okay. So we've dealt with this. There's that chest that we got the gold pine resin from. So we're now we're now standing where we were looking out over before. Tons more <laughs> blood stains. This is pretty cool seeing all these blood stains. That I mean to me that looks like that's a bunch of people playing Dark Souls for the first time, which is pretty cool. There's a new generation of Dark Souls fans is being born. Or else, uh, they're giving up and not playing anymore. <laughs> so, uh, this is a little stairway. Now, there's a black knight down there. And if I go past that black knight, uh, you get to that, that ring that I mentioned before. Um... However, I'm, again, I'm not sure the ring is worth uh, potentially dying over. It's possible I could defeat that Black Knight, but I am pretty rusty at this game. It's been well over a year since I played last. And that was the old game. Uh, so 
I don't know what's different about this game. So I'm just going to play conservatively and ignore that. So let's continue forward. Watch out for the rolling burning barrel. If I were doing a speed run, you can actually uh, just like sidestep that by like walking around to the side, I think, or maybe jumping over it. I forget. But when you're doing a speed run, you don't stop <laughs> for that barrel. Tough enemy ahead. All right, so this is a door that is locked. If I had the master key, I would be able to open that door and go that direction, which leads to... Um, yeah, I do believe it does lead to a tough enemy. But also some different stuff. Um, I forget how this works. Where's that... Uh, where's the thing? There he is. Ugh, where is he? Come back here. How am I not hitting this thing? Oh, the mace knocks him over. That's pretty cool. Yay! Twinkling Titanite, Titanite Chunk. That was a Titanite bug. Well, that definitely looks like it's higher resolution. He's still wiggling on the ground. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, those things give you... Uh, Titanite pieces, which you can use to upgrade your weapons, which is very important. I don't think there's anything else. So, um... Let me situate myself here because we're about to go through a white fog and that means we're about to fight a boss uh, n not always but many times when you go through a white door like this it could signify that you're about to go into a boss fight um, sometimes in Dark Souls 1 it doesn't always mean that it could just mean a new area but um, just be prepared if you go through a white fog like this that you might be fighting a boss. So, I am prepared. What does this message say? Imminent giant. So we will get through this boss. That will probably be close to the end of the episode. Now, before I go charging ahead, I happen to know that behind me on this tower, there are some folks that are going to make my life difficult. Archers, in fact. Ouch. You stink. I kicked him thinking he had a shield, but obviously he does not have a shield. Hey, I have another light crossbow. You know, it's just occurred to me. There's no mana in this game. I was, I was just thinking, how do I know how many I can cast? I now see that there's a little three up there. So I can only cast, like, five heals, I guess. Sliding down the ladder works a little bit differently in Dark Souls 2. You, you have to stop and then hold down the B button. You can't press it while you're also running at the same time. Okay, so now I happen to know there's a boss coming up, so I'm going to prepare for this boss fight. Boom. Hello, Taurus Demon. Now you have to be careful not 
Oh, damn. Ah. Have to be careful not to fall off the side of the bridge. No. Oh, man, I got nailed there. Come on, get up, get up, get up. Oh, no! I didn't get my swing. My swing didn't connect. Oh, no. Oh. That was brutal. Absolutely brutal. Okay. We are now going to see... the normal way that one gets back to a boss. Which is the speed run. <laughs> so, um, yeah, after you've played Dark Souls a while, you, you kind of realize that it's actually not super fun to, um... Oh, they're still there. <laughs> so they're probably going to come out of there as soon as I kill this boss. Um, yeah, it's not super fun to run back to... Oh, good God. To kill everybody on the way to a boss every time. So... At a certain level of impatience, you just start just running past everybody. And that's what I just did. Okay, so I want to get my souls back. So so when I died, of course, I dropped all my souls. So that's what that green glowing thing is down there. So I want to go back and get those. Let's use the lightning. Which, I mean, is not strictly necessary, but I just kind of want to get through this guy as quick as possible. Hey there. Got my souls. Oh, come on. I dodged that. Whatever. Whatever. Okay, I'm in a little bit of trouble here. There we go. My timing is all wrong. Timing is everything in this game. There we go. <laughs> so I was... That is exactly what I tried to do last time, which was get the last swing in before he hit me. All right, I got a humanity and a homeward bone. Awesome. So the homeward bone, I believe is the first one we've picked up, returns to the last bonfire rested at. Bone fragment reduced to white ash. Return to last bonfire used for resting. Bonfires are fueled by bones of the undead. In rare cases, the strong urge of their previous owners to seek bonfires enchants their bones with a homeward instinct. It's a lot of lore explanation for a for a simple gameplay mechanic. Um, so one thing you'll notice since I died, uh, the the circle in the upper left is no longer white; it's gray, and my face is all messed up again, which means I'm hollowing again. Um, you know, actually, I think. No, I'm going to go forward because uh, I wanted to... Wait, no, maybe I'm not going to do this. I might actually end up going back to that bonfire. Because, yes, this is leading here, which is not... Not quite where I want to be, but... We'll, uh... 
Here's a door here, but it's locked. I can't open that. That leads to a new area. We're going to come back there at some point. Uh, the way forward for us is across that bridge. Um, but I'm thinking I'm going to go back to the bonfire first. But before I do that, I'm going to come down here and talk to this guy. Ah, hello. You don't look hollow, far from it. I am Soler of Astora, an adherent of the Lord of Sunlight. Now that I am undead, I have come to this great land, the birthplace of Lord Gwyn, to seek my very own son. Do you find that strange? Well, you should. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. <laughs> Oh, aha. So I didn't scare you. I have a proposition, if you have a moment. Sure, I will listen to your proposition. The way I see it, our fates appear to be intertwined. In a land brimming with hollows, could that really be mere chance? So what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? Certainly. Mr. Solaire, I will help you. Did he tell us his name already? I don't know. His name is Solaire, if you don't know. <laughs> it pleases me greatly. Well then, take this. A white sign soapstone. We are amidst strange beings in a strange land. The flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes centuries old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers, and relations shift and obscure. There's no telling how much longer your world and mine will remain in contact. But use this to summon one another as spirits, cross the gaps between the worlds, and engage in jolly cooperation. Of course, we are not the only ones engaged in this, but I am a warrior of the sun. Spot my summon signature easily by its brilliant aura. If you miss it, you must be blind. <laughs> Warriors of the Sun. That's what I was trying to think of earlier. Oh, hello there. I will stay behind to gaze at the sun. The sun is a wondrous body, like a magnificent father. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. <laughs> oh, hello. The if so, um, this is the Knight Solaire. The, the origin of the praise the sun thing. Master head. Praise the sun. Yeah. So anytime you see praise the sun in Dark Souls, this is the guy who started all that. Um, uh, there's a lot to his story that um, I, I won't go into. You can go read about it. <laughs> the thing about Dark Souls is... Uh, there's a lot of story in it, but they don't necessarily tell you the story. They leave clues and pieces, and they, they kind of make you figure it out on your own. So let's read the... Here it is. White Sign Soapstone. Online play item. Leave a summon sign. Be summoned to another world as a phantom through your sign, and defeat the area boss to acquire humanity. Hollows cannot conduct summons. In Lordran, the flow of time is distorted, and the white sign soapstone allows undead to assist one another. So the basic idea is that lets you, um... If you remember all those summon signs near the Undead Berg bonfire, the white sign soapstone is what put those down. And that would allow me to summon other people to help me with boss fights and allow me to help other people with boss fights, I think. I'm, I don't think I've ever done that in Dark Souls 1. Uh, so I'm looking at my time, and I think I have enough time to make a run for the next logical stopping point. So I'm going to head across this bridge and hope very much that I don't die. Because of that.
Okay, we made it. <laughs> so, there's a dragon there. He looks... He looks more colorful than I remember him. He's a, he's very red looking now. So the dragon flies over, burns everybody on the bridge, and uh, the first time you play the game, it's a really uh, surprising moment. But uh, I was prepared for it, so. Now, I believe, yes. Remember that ladder we were looking at before? This is the ladder, and we have now unlocked a shortcut back to the Undead Burg bonfire. So I am going to... let me see, what should I do? I guess I'm going to rest here, I'm going to reverse my hollowing again. Or should I kindle it? No, I can't do that while I'm hollowed. Offer a humanity. Okay, so I used that one humanity that I had up there in the corner to uh, reverse my hollowing. Now, what I should do is kindle this bonfire. Kindling um, allows you to use more Estus flasks. So if I kindle this bonfire once, then I would be able to use 10 Estus flasks. Currently I'm limited to 5. Uh, every time you kindle a bonfire you get 5 more Estus flasks. Covenant. I don't... I don't know what this does. You already... Oh, so I can change covenants at bonfires? I didn't know that. Uh, let's try to repair my equipment. Yes, so we are able to do this because we got that uh, repair thing. I could level up. Uh, I could increase some stats. Um, thinking I don't really need to, but I guess I will get vitality. What is vitality? Vitality is just straight up hit points. So I can, wow, I can level up a lot here. Endurance increases our stamina and our equipment load. Okay, so that's combined together. So that's a, that's different in Dark Souls 1. They changed that in 2 and 3. Or definitely 3, I don't know about 2, I forget. Resistance. I feel like resistance is a completely wasted stat, and I should just ignore that. Um, okay, so I... Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I guess I'm just gonna grab a couple of points of vitality. Whatever. Good enough. Save my souls for something else. No, I'm gonna spend them all. Because <laughs> I'm probably going to get killed. So. I'm just going to get Vitality. Okay, and uh, I will stop here and pick it up from here next time. See you later.